could go somewhere with this. They could see the treasure down inside of them. Yeah, right, all right. So the prophetic is about encouragement. It's, it's about helping the people to see. So the prophets in the Old Testament were called seers because they Oh God. 
know if I'm going to support yeah. one or the other. And, 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 and really, they've already been they already headed to the divorce club, but they just want to come check in and say, okay, hi, I just want to talk to you. But they're not already mad because they never heard the God accounts for the poor people. And he's yeah. telling the same thing, like, I ain't trying to hear you. Well, well, well. So we have here then Elisha, who was the one who followed Elijah. The prophecy came into existence about 1100 BC. And so then the, uh, these two prophets were called the non writing prophets, right there. And so God calls Elijah and Elisha to minister to and to prophesy to the northern kingdom. This is the kingdom of, of the people of God who followed a, a rail bomb and started worshiping a golden calf. Now this always messed me up, right? When you read the story about Solomon at the end of his life, there was rail bomb. I think I'm saying that's right, because it's son. Jeroboam, sorry, Jeroboam, Jeroboam. Jeroboam that came to, to Solomon and told him that, you know, you're not worshiping God, you're, you're worshiping idols. And then God gives him 10 kingdoms and he turn around and do the same thing. Be careful what you preach because you try to make sure you don't practice but the wrong stuff that you're preaching against and you're doing what you said those people should do because then that takes away your authority because now here's the job on up the rush for the cat. After God gave him 10, he gave him 10, huh? 10, 10 of the tribes and left, left the rub on one tribe. <laughs> so now here these prophets are going trying to tell them that hey, you can continue to walk out the I walk out the practices of Jeroboam, and the fierce anger of the Lord has now aroused against him. And so here Elijah is now ministering. And so what happens is that the the the, uh, the enemies of God's people were making plans to go against his people. You find this in verse eight, where now you have the king of Syria. Uh, ben Hadadak the second, who is making plans, devising plans to go against Israel. And watch this, he says, my camp will be in such and such place. Watch me now. Do you understand that you are in warfare? That the devil is not still somewhere chilling, letting you just get your praise on, letting you live right, and he's not going to come up in some kind of way trying to attack you in such and such place. But, but this one, when he said might, he spoke about faculty. 
right? The, the God's sovereignty. Uh, that speaks to his capability uh, to do exceedingly and abundantly all that you ask or think. Why you you didn't get that? In, in other words, no matter what you're going through, God is capable and able. So he is the father of us to be strong in the light of the power of his might. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you might stand against the wiles of the devil. The Greek word for wiles is strategies. And so here's the prophet's reward. Is that the prophet is trying to give you information so that you might know the enemy's strategy when he's coming up against your house, when he's coming up against your finances, when he's coming up against your walk, when he's not be connected. I know what I need to do. I need to get down on my knees. 
so as I wrap this up and bring this to a close, I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us. Jesus was our priest, our king, and our prophet. And he came down knowing what God was going to do, but yet he still took the punishment. He still yeah. took the people talking about it. And when it was time for him to go to talk, he didn't say a moaning word. They, they spat on him. They slapped him with an open hand. This is God treating less than a human by the religious folk that was supposed to say they love God. They spat on him. They slapped him with an open hand. They pushed out his beard, but he didn't say a moaning word. He just hung in there. And then when it was time for the throne of the cross, he said, let's go to the
Thank you.